there are two basic methods for setting up an energy budget for lighting. First, the prescriptive method. And second, the performance method. Prescriptive method is basically a longhand calculation approach where electricity usage is tallied and maintained manually in a document or spreadsheet. Power calculation charts and tables for this method can be found in Chapter 5 of the Non-Residential Compliance Manual. There are three prescriptive approaches available for complying with the lighting standards. First, the complete building method. Second, the area category method. And third, the tailored method. The complete building method can be used for single purpose buildings. Here are some examples of single purpose buildings. A convention center, a grocery store, a library, a religious facility, a school, and a theater. 90% of the floor area for the entire building must consist of only one type of use. The complete building method uses an allowed lighting power density value based on building type, which is multiplied by the building's total number of square feet. To illustrate the process, first, identify the building type. Second, identify the total number of square feet. Third, look up the allowed lighting power density value in wattage by square foot for each building by building type. The allowed lighting power density value can be found in the non-residential compliance manual. Fourth, multiply the allowed lighting power density value by the building's total number of square feet to determine the maximum total allowable lighting power for that building. If the design is a school building, you are allowed one watt per square foot. So, if you have a 10,000 square foot building, you are allowed a maximum total of 10,000 watts of lighting across the entire building. The area category method is where a building is broken down into areas. Here are some examples of building areas. A classroom, a lobby, a lounge, a main entry, an office, and a restroom. Each area within a building has an allowed lighting power density value. Energy calculations are performed by multiplying the allowed lighting power density value in watts per square foot by each area's total number of square feet. To illustrate the process, first, identify all areas within a building. Second, identify the square footage for each area. Third, look up the allowed lighting power density value Fourth, multiply the allowed lighting power density value in wattage for each area by the total number of square feet in each area. And fifth, add the total for each area together to determine the total allowable lighting power. The third approach is the tailored method. This method is primarily used when you are projecting light onto a display artwork on walls. An exhibit in a museum or products in a retail store. Lighting power density adjustment factors, or PAF, provide an additional strategy. This is where additional controls are designed into an area above and beyond mandatory requirements. By applying these additional controls, you have the opportunity to increase your energy budget by bonus power factors. The performance method is a model-based approach where software is used for performing budgeting, modeling, and calculations. The energy budget is based on an energy simulation model of the building. Modeling and calculations are performed through an approved computer software program. The performance method is the preferred approach and is where energy codes are moving towards. The performance method is described in Chapter 11 of the Non-Residential Compliance Manual. The performance method provides greater flexibility and will provide the most accurate and cost-effective lighting control solutions. To learn more about Title 24, please visit www.leventon.com forward slash Title 24.